Since the introduction of USB-C on these newer iPhones, we're now encountering some problems with touch and charging. So this specific model is a 15 Pro and it has no touch. As you can see, it turns on, but it's not detecting my finger. Also, it is not charging. So you can see here, it shows like it's trying to charge, but nothing shows up here on the top. So if I unplug it, plug it back in, the meter turns on, so it detects the circuit, but it's not charging. This would actually be at nine volts and about two or three amps. So there's definitely a problem here. Now, I did confirm these are also known good parts. I actually have a donor board. This is a working board that is locked, but it works. And it, I put it in this housing and it fully works. It charges and everything. So the solution for this repair is to actually get the motherboard out of this phone. We're gonna split the two layer sandwich. We're gonna go in and replace two ICs here, the charging controller and the EEPROM. These are technically paired together. So, so far, as far as we know, we have to get it from a working board and it has to be the same model. We cannot do 15 Pro Max with the 15 Pro and vice versa. It has to be 15 Pro to 15 Pro. This is according to Geelong who did the initial research on solving this issue. Also, Aaron Harrington, he also made a video and confirmed that that is what we have to do. We got to swap these chips to the customer's board so we can get touch working and get access to their data. Now I did see on a Facebook group post that somebody had this issue, but data was not important and they restored it and it fixed it. So I wonder if there's some programming that happens during a restore that will fix the issue. Maybe it's some sort of software glitch, but as of right now, it seems to be a motherboard problem. Is These are all brand new issues and part of what we have to do is try to, basically everyone works together to figure out what exactly is going on and how to fix it. And I think for now, we have a solution of replacing those chips. So in this video, we're gonna go through that process of repairing this phone so we get the customer's data. If you guys enjoy these type of videos, make sure you guys are supporting the channel by smashing the like button, subscribing. Also, check out the links down below. I will have my new t-shirts, these shiny solder balls. I will link it in the video description as well as some other useful information, including the G-Long video, Aaron Harrington, and some other cool links. So let's go ahead and get started with this video. So this is the donor board, and this is basically the chips in question, the charging controller. This is what handles USB-C. There's no longer a TriStar or Tigris, it is this one. Now, I do believe there's another chip that might be responsible. Oh, here you go. So I believe this is another charging chip that's also uh, responsible for charging. But for now, as far as I know, these are the two that we need to swap over. So this is where it's located. So if you find PMIC is here and then these two chips here. So let's get these off of my donor board so we can, because we're gonna use them for the repair. Also charging EEPROM, I guess. So we're gonna take both of these. All right, so I'm gonna use 380 Celsius with 50% error. Now I do have a big nozzle on right now because I had to do a few CPU swaps that require it and I didn't move it over, but it shouldn't be a problem. I'm just gonna point my hot air the other direction, away from PMIC. Now this is a donor. This is the one I used to test and confirm that touch works and that it charges. All right, as you see, I bumped it. All right, I'm gonna put this off to the side. And then here's the uh, EEPROM. I believe it's called EEPROM. I feel like maybe this, that's the wrong name, but that's what I'm gonna call it here. If, uh, if it's not called EEPROM, then I'll correct it in the description. So make sure you guys are checking out the video description for additional information. Okay, so there you go. So now let's go ahead and split the 15, uh, customer 15 Pro Max. Now I did add this sticker because there's a phone number showing up there from a notification that I cannot swipe away. So I need to protect the customer's privacy about that. Now, if you didn't know the 15 Pro and Pro Max, this their design is really weird. So you gotta get the battery out. I already did that earlier. It's very similar to the 14 Pro and Pro Max, but there's a, an extra booby trap on here. 
So let me unplug all these flex cables. All right, so now once you got everything unplugged and you have the 5G flex also removed, you wanna flip it on its side. And then there's a hidden flex cable under here. There's a plate that covers it, so you have to unscrew that, but you have enough room to just flip it on its side and then you're now able to get it out. Now the problem with this repair is that flex down here is required for the device to stay on. If you have this unplugged or it's damaged or a defective part, the phone will restart every three minutes, which also means if we split this board, we cannot get the data with just the top board only. We have to put the bottom board so the flex can be plugged in and the phone does not restart. So keep that in mind. We also have to reball it. I'm not gonna cover that in this video because I already have reballing videos on this basically. So uh, make sure you guys are checking those out. I will link to those videos down below in the video description. So not just um, reballing, but how to split it and all that. In this video, I'm just gonna skip that step as well just to reduce the length of the video. So I split the board. This is a customer's original board. I use 215 on the sandwich heater. This is the I2C T20 heater and uh, the 15 plates. I don't see any solder balls, so I think we should still be good. Here's the customer's board. Wanna look for any solder balls. I don't see any. So I think we're good. I'm gonna remove this thermal paste. Cause we don't need it. Well, that's right. On this model, they don't add the A17 Pro label or anything. I just, an Apple logo. wonder why. And by the way, if you have a iPhone 15 series that is having this issue, we do offer mail-in service. You see it in the middle, bottom of your screen. So if you guys need this, if you need this service, reach out to me through my website for a quote. Right now we're only offering this as data recovery. As we get more in, we might be able to repair it. And like I said, a, a restore might be able to fix it as well. So, uh, by the way, uh, here's the orientation dot. So I'm gonna mark the board, a little gentle scratch. So now the orientation, the EEPROM goes there. Now I, I might, I, I was mentioning earlier the the name of the chip might be called EEPROM, but actually I think it might be called a ROM. I don't know. Uh, without the schematics, there's no way to know for sure. So if someone can correct me in the comments, let me know. I was just curious. I was, uh, I know on the iPads with USB-C, the CD3217, there's a ROM chip with them. But uh, originally there was a speculation that they're paired but so we had one case where not until we pulled both CD3217 from a donor and the ROM chip from the same device and swapped those over kind of like what we're doing here they finally work but after that I even wrote a repair wiki article on it but even after that it was still uh, we were able to just swap only the CD32 chip and it worked So right now I'm removing the customer's charging controller. Okay, and I'm putting these in a way different place than the other ones. That way we don't mix them up. All right, let me actually leave it like this. My, this tube of flux is like uh, running on fumes. So hopefully it lasts the whole video. This is the wrong tip. My one month old JVC tip died. So I switched to a old one I had, but this one's kind of wonky. So I've been using the smaller C15. Yeah, see, it doesn't even melt all the right pads. Let me switch irons and tips. All right, so this is my JVC knife tip. I think it's JVC, pretty sure JVC. But it's on the micro pencil, this T115 handle. There it goes. 
So my main handle is a T210 and I use the knife tip as my main tip. But like I said, my one month old tip died. So now I gotta use the micro pencil, which surprisingly is pretty, works pretty well for being a micro pencil. I think it's solder over here. Let me add a little more flux. Now what's gonna suck is I don't have a jig for this model. So I have to reball it. Um, I was looking online and I see there's jigs online, but I need to make this video. So I'm gonna leave out the ending reball process because I said there's already a reball video on my channel. I think all, everything is good. I didn't bump anything either. So let's turn on these other lights. Turn off this one. What do you guys think? Does this lighting look better? Take a look. Or this one. So this is the ring lights. This is the, what I call the, well not what I call it, the polarizer lights. All right, they both kind of provide different kind of lighting. And what sucks is the camera kind of picks up the view differently. So even though on my eyes it looks one way, on camera it doesn't look 100% the same. All right, so here you go. Here's the orientation. And then here's the pads. I might have bumped these two together. It's kind of hard to tell. Let's get this chip. I'm gonna reball it. Now, you shouldn't be attempting this repair if you don't know how to solder. This, this, uh, this whole process is something that a trained technician who has experience doing these type of repairs should be doing. Um, you know, there's a lot of repair techs out there who think they can do this stuff, and they've never done it before. So, you want to be careful with where you take your devices for service, whether it's repair or data recovery. You know, we've been doing data recovery for many years. We specialize in micro soldering. So if you watch my channel, you can see all the different repairs we do. By the way, this is the sensor I'll be using, iPhone 15 from Ammo, Ammo. The thing is, where's the stencil? slot for this one. Oh, here it goes. Now I do need some more paste. So my paste bucket's almost empty. So all we need is a little tiny bit like that. And then we gotta press it down into the paper towel or clean cloth, whatever you're using. And we apply some paste. I will link to all my tools that I use in today's video in the video description. I also have them on my website. If you wanna support the channel, use those links. I get a few cents out of each, uh, each thing you buy. All right, so let's do 3.30 Celsius. It's a small chip, so it's easy to reball. I did see somebody was struggling with reballing and I have I have no idea on why that is. By the way, here's some shiny solder balls for you for you guys. Hope you guys are enjoying the t-shirt designs that I have on my uh, store. So if you guys want to support the channel, you guys like these videos, you guys like my long form videos, you know these are very time consuming to make and getting very uh not discouraging but it's a lot of work and we're like super busy right now as far as like our queue so uh, in order for us to make make this worth it we need you guys' support even if it's just a comment and uh yeah just leaving a comment below liking it sharing it and if you guys can share this video anytime someone has this type of issue, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'm gonna re 
Flores. Uh, it kind of looks like there's something on one of the solder balls, like some debris, so hopefully it's not an issue. Oh yeah, here we go, there's like a little hair. Here we go, this is Revolved. Next is the ROM chip or the EEPROM, whatever you guys want to call it. Now this one's an odd shape. Uh, I'm not really sure how this would work. Let's go ahead and try to reball it. I think I'm debating, do I? I think I'm gonna try to run my iron over the pads first. It's kind of like, a, reminds me of a Nintendo Switch N92. You know, like a surface mount type of pads. All right, let's clean it up with some isopropyl alcohol. Now this one you probably can get away with not reballing at all, just because of how little pads we have. There's only a few. And this one, since it's not a BGA, you can probably press it down and make it contact. But I did notice the stencil does have this, this on here. So let's uh, find it. There you go. So it also reminds me kind of of the, the flood illuminator. There's a hair on my tool. Let's shave it down and just do a quick wipe over the pads. Let's see. Let's reflow this. Oh, shifted. Oh, well, that's fine. Let's poke it through. All right, so it looks kind of funny. So let's just reflow it one more time. Oh man, these solder balls are huge. And the middle one is most likely ground. So I'm thinking of just flattening it flatten it out a little bit. Because there's gonna be ground on the pins as well. But I don't know, let's see. Let's see if we run into any problems. And one thing I didn't check is the phone still boots with the top board only. Let's go, let's go ahead and start the repair itself. Uh, I'm kind of wanting to flatten this out, it's like wicked flat. So let's try it. I wonder. Because the pads on the chip are pretty, uh, pretty large. That actually worked pretty well with my micro pencil. But I'm using an Action 420D soldering iron station. I've retired the hackle in that I sold all my hackle soldering irons because I don't think they're really designed for micro soldering per se. Um, just the tips they have, none of them are like small enough for, for this type of work. Whereas the JBC tips, which work on the Action, are... Uh, all like tiny and they have like all the right tips for this type of work if you have a hacko uh, I, ha I would highly recommend you guys consider upgrading to an action it's only like 350 for a dual iron station you could probably sell your hacko for 350 like a fm203 so So that's my thoughts. Oh, here it goes. Here it goes, installed. 
Now next is the charging controller, USB-C controller, whatever you want to call it. Lights with the flux. I'm going to throw it on here and then there's the dots. Let's match the orientation. Now keep in mind, uh, this repair, this data recovery service is not cheap per se. Because one of the factors is we have to buy donor boards. This means we have to buy a fully working board. It could be iCloud lock, but it has to be fully working for us to pull these chips from. And as you can imagine, it's not going to be cheap to find the working board for these type of jobs, especially a brand new model. So uh, just be prepared. You have a $1,500 phone, most likely, or I guess $1,200, whatever model you have, it's over $1,000. And in order for us to get all these tools and know the skill to do this successfully without killing your phone and ruining the chance of recovering your data, you know, it does come at a cost. You know, skilled technicians are not cheap. And this is something, you know, I do for a living, a good living, and I want to keep it that way. So you guys got to just keep that in mind. You know, quality comes at a cost. All right, I was able to bump it. It seems like it's installed. The bridge that I thought was there is not there, so, so yeah. All right, so it's been a few seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and try to clean this up. Now I gotta look for bridges between the sandwich pads because I don't wanna try to boot this with the short within the pads because you never know there could be some important pads shorted together and you don't want to have a problem our visual inspection of the bottom board is clear so we're good there as well all right so in order for us to test this top board only we have to get a little creative uh, what i did is fold the flex over and I plugged it in, I plugged in the screen, and I'm gonna plug in the battery now. All right, and then we're gonna get the charger, and then what we're gonna look for is, does it charge? All right, oh, look at that, nine volts and one amp, 1.2, two amps. Oh, let me see this flip over the screen, and all right, we got an Apple logo. So, so far, Things look good, it's charging properly. Now, can we access their data? Here it is, the moment of truth. Do we get touch? Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's fixed. So let me check the pin code. Look at that, we're in. <laughs> All right, cool. So we should be able to get the data. Now I do have to reball this to get it back working, but at least we're inside, we're in the phone and data will be accessible. So here comes all the notifications. So yeah, there you go. There's the solution for this issue. So now I just gotta do a little more extra work to complete this job, but it's pretty straightforward. And you know, this, this was actually not that difficult. The problem is though all the steps required, you know, I did leave out a lot of them out of the video because I mostly wanted to show you guys the process, the solution itself, the repair itself is gonna be a really long video. So I, I, I don't wanna spend all this time editing and all that. I will link down below to the different parts. If you put all these videos together, then you'll know everything you need to do for this repair. So splitting the sandwich, reballing it. And then you, in this video, we swapped out the IC from a donor board. I will also link down below my t-shirts like this one. So if you guys want to support the channel, you guys like me spending time making these videos, support me with those links down below. I will also post some more information about this repair. Uh, I will most likely make a repair wiki guide on this as well. So make sure you guys are checking out all the links 
Let me know down below in the comments what you guys learned from this video, what you found helpful. And so if you guys need a data recovery, I will link my website down below so you can contact me for a quote. Also, if you guys made it here to the very end, I will let you know a little secret. I did float the NAND on this job, so I had to reball it. So if you take a look at where the chips are, they're directly where NAND is. So that is gonna be a risk for anyone attempting this. And it was a pretty straightforward NAND reball, so I got it done and now it's booting and everything. So this is saved. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.